everyone, this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this linked chain and pendant necklace, earrings, and a bracelet to match. We're going to be using the Sparkling Romance Treasure Bag. However, I have most everything you see here on my website, so if you would like to try it, if you didn't get the treasure bag, then you can go ahead and find most of these components. So, well, all of them actually. So I have a bunch of these hearts left over and I will get all that posted so if you want to try it you can. Otherwise just get something similar in your stash and just make something very similar. All you need is a pendant and some jump rings and some six millimeter round beads and head pins, eye pins, excuse me, and you can do this. So let's go ahead and look and see how to make this. But first I want to show you the bracelet on. If you can see it well, it's pretty cute. It's got these little dangly hearts and it's just, it's a really cute bracelet. So anyway, that's what we're going to make today. And let's go ahead and look at what it takes to make this and get started. Okay, so I am going to design a jewelry set with my Sparkling Romance treasure bag. Now these are very basic sizes and very ba basic techniques that I'm going to be using so you can do this with any beads you have on hand. I'm just going to make a very clean um, beaded chain pendant necklace. So I, what I mean by very clean is it's just going to be a beaded chain basically. So I'm going to be using the two strands that came in the treasure bag, these um, clear six millimeter round which seems to be a little bit bigger than the red six millimeter round which is fine doesn't matter but I'm going to use both these strands because they're very long strands and they have a lot of beads on them and I'm going to use this little heart pendant and one of the toggles I'm going to design the necklace first I think with the bracelet I may use this little package of heart charms probably just the small ones but I haven't completely decided yet and then I'm going to use a bunch of jump rings and I think that I'm just going to use the six millimeter size so it's six millimeter outside diameter and I'll be using some of those this is a fairly heavy gauge it's about a 20 gauge that way it'll be nice and strong to connect my links with and then I'm just going to make a whole bunch of links like this with eye pins so I'm going to grab my eye pins where did I put them and I'm just going to use a bunch of these in the bright silver color and I have been using my one-step looper this is the 1.5 millimeter loop one-step looper to make these because it's much faster so um, I recommend if you are going to make a bunch of beaded type chains to get one of these and I got mine on Amazon but um, I just did a search for one-step looper and there are I think three sizes and like I said I'm using the 1.5 loop and I'm going to show you how to use it but I'll also show you how to make a basic loop a basic link like this without one just in case you don't intend to get one don't want to get one whatever it's just the basic loop so let me kind of um, clear my space a little bit and I'll show you how to make the links and then I will go off camera and continue to make links until I have enough and then I will come back and show you exactly how many I'm going to make and I will also show you how we're going to put the whole thing together. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is learn how to make a loop without the one step looper. So. I'm going to take one of my eye pins. You can use a shorter eye pin than this. We're making single units of uh, single beads on it. So you could definitely use a shorter one. But this is what I have out. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to drop my bead onto it. And then right above the bead, I'm going to place a pair of flat nose pliers. And I'm going to place it about a millimeter above the bead. And I'm just going to straighten or bend straight over into a 90 degree angle just like this and this is what I have and now I'm going to place it on my finger like this because it's easier to hold and then I'm going to grab my flush cutters 
and I'm going to cut about the width of my finger a little bit shorter, about a quarter of an inch, or not quite. And then I am going to get my round nose pliers. Now I wanna work on the, about this area of my round nose pliers because I want a small loop because I'm using a head pin and the other side isn't that big of a loop. So I'm going to place it about here. So you may want to cut your wire a couple of times and place your um, round nose pliers on it if you're not real familiar, just to learn how to be consistent. So I'm placing my pliers on, it's flush on the back, the wire is flush with the pliers, and then I'm going to start to turn as much as I can and once I can't turn anymore, I'm going to take my hand out, turn my plier over, put it back into the loop, towards the front of the loop is where you want to grab, and then just continue to turn. And you can move your pliers around to adjust to the size, and now I have a loop. Now, my loops are not exactly the same direction, so I can grab two pairs of pliers, and I can straighten them out, and I can make them the same direction. And if my loops are open, I can lift the open side and then bring it back down, pushing it towards the opposite side of the loop. And now I have a looped component just like this. And that's how you're going to make it if you don't have a one-step looper. If, however, you do, this is what the one-step lo looper looks like. This, like I said before, is a 1.5 loop. Since this is a small loop on my eye pin, I want a small loop. So I'm going to put another one of my beads on the eye pin. On this one step looper, you want to hold it to where you can see the patent pending and the size of the loop on the handle so that you have it on the right side. And then you you see there's a little peg here, a little hole on the side here, and you're going to go under the peg with your eye pin through the hole, and then you're going to balance your bead. Let me get my hand on here. You're going to balance your bead to where it's touching right against this little C shape here, just like that and then you're just going to squeeze. And it should just push the bead in alignment, kind of bend it back so that it's centered. Now I'm finding that my, my little um, loops are sticking on here pretty good. So you just have to kind of pull it off. And then a lot of times the loop is open. So I will take my round nose pliers, put it in the loop and just close it like that. And now I have a loop and of course, or a looped component. Of course, I can then straighten out the sides. Usually they come out of there pretty good, but I can straighten them up and put it aside. So I am going to make a bunch of red and then the same exact process you'll use with the clear ones. So I am going to make a big pile. I will come back and tell you exactly how many I have made and we will design the necklace. Okay, so I'm guessing how many units I'm going to need to make an 18 to 20 inch necklace. So what I have made of the red units is 16 and I have made 14 of the clear looped units. And then I have some six millimeter, and this is the outside diameter, 20 gauge jump rings. And I have my heart pendant, and I have two jump rings. They're also six millimeter that I'm going to connect to the pendant, and then I'm going to start connecting the units. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to open one of these jump rings. I'm going to grab two pairs of chain nose pliers and my opening is here. So I'm just gonna place a plier on one side of that opening and then another plier on the other side of the opening and I'm just gonna twist it open like that. Then I'm going to put one, I'm going to put this one on to my pendant on the loop and then I'm going to drop a component and I'm gonna start with the red ones onto the jump ring and then I'm just going to close it and grab a hold of it here the same way I opened it. So I'm just going to twist it back 
make sure that it's closed tightly and this is what I have so far. So I want to do the same thing on this side so that I can make the other side of my necklace. So again, I'm just going to find the opening and twist it open on my jump ring. I'm going to put it on the other side of the loop here, making sure you don't cross through the existing jump ring you just put on, and then put on one of your loops and close it. Okay, so now this is the beginning of our necklace, just like this. If you want to, you can put dangles on those little loops or whatever you'd like, but I think I just want this to be very clean. I just want it to be a beaded chain pendant necklace like this. So then what I will begin doing is I will pick up my jump rings and I will open them just like I showed you how to open them. And... I will grab another unit after I put it on the loop of the existing unit here and then I will drop a clear one on and I'm just going to alternate clear and red on this like this and I'm going to use since I have 14 I will use seven of my clear ones on one side so I have six here because I have seven attached already and since I have 16 I'll use eight of my red ones so I will count out seven one two three four five six seven because I always have already have a red one and I will just continue alternating putting the units on. So I'll put a jump ring and a red one and then a jump ring and a clear one and so on. And once I have finished that side, then I will finish the other side looping or putting the, the loops together. So um, I will come back after I do one side and show you exactly the length that I end up with so you will know if you want to adjust your number of units or not to make it longer or shorter. And I'll be back. Okay, so I have connected all of my units, um, the seven clear and the eight red, and I have decided, well first let me tell you how long this is. This is about nine and a half inches, so when we finish we're going to get around a 20 to 21 inch, 20 and a half inches, something like that necklace, so that you know that's the length that this amount of units will make but I have decided that this is boring so what I've decided to do is the units that I made for the other side I think I'm going to try connecting them to this jump ring that I put the first unit on and I'm going to alternate the colors the other way so I'm going to need one less of the eight and one more of the clear which I can make one more clear but I'm going to just go ahead and um, connect I think I'm going to do a jump ring here and then I'm going to connect to the jump ring my first unit and because I'm doing that I may not need one more unit I'm going to see how it works out so I'll have a double strand here and I'm going to try to alternate the colors against the colors I have already on here so that I have a little bit more red in here I think it'll make it a little less boring so I'm going to take another one of my jump rings and I think I think I'm going to attach it I think I'm going to use a smaller jump ring so let's see what I have I think I will use about a four millimeter, four or five millimeter in diameter jump ring and that might be about this size here and I think I'm going to attach it to the jump ring that I have on my unit already. Let me get you in closer here. I want to, or I may just use one of my bigger ones. Let's try the bigger one, see what happens. So I'm going to use the ones that I have been using this will move my bead to where it's not right on top of my other bead and um, so I'm going to take a clear unit and I'm going to attach it to 
this jump ring and then I'm going to attach this jump ring to this one here. And I am going to close it. See if that's too bulky in the front of my necklace here. Yeah, that might be a little bulky. No, I, I think it's going to be okay, actually. So now that I've done that, I still have... My beads are going to kind of separate away from each other a little, which is fine. So you will be able to tell that there is two distinct strands. <coughs> Excuse me. Voice has been doing really weird things. So... What I'm going to do then is I am designing, so if I don't like this, either you'll never see this piece of film or video, or um, we'll just keep going with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open another jump ring and put it on this unit, and then I'm going to put my red one on. And I'm just going to continue building my units all the way until I get towards the end and see how I want to handle um, the ending. So, but I think that's going to be prettier, having a double strand on either side because it's just going to be more colorful. Um, with the clear and all of these big jump rings, it just was really boring. So I'm going to go ahead and continue building the second strand. And if I like it, we'll connect the... Um, back of it and then we'll make the other side exactly the same way. We'll just have to go off camera and make more of our units. So we'll have to make exactly the same amount we made for this side for the other side. So, and that's fine. But I'm just going to continue connecting these and I will come back and show you what I have. Okay, so I have gone ahead and made a whole another strand and I've made it exactly opposite of the one that I made previously, just changing my colors and alternating them the opposite way from which I alternated this one. Now, you can see on the end here, <clears throat> let me get you way down here. I'm going to straighten this out. You can see that once I've put on my last clear bead, because I used eight clear on this one and seven red on the inside one, because I alternated or I changed the alternation of color. So you can see, because I added an extra jump ring on the other end to start this strand on the inside, I am just a little short here. So if I put another jump ring, another of my six millimeter, then I will be the same. So what I'm going to do is on this outside strand that's a little shorter because of the jump ring I added to the inside strand, I am going to add another jump ring on the end of this red unit here. And close it. Oops, I don't think that is closed. Let me see. Almost. And now I'm going to grab another one of my six millimeter. And this way I can open it up and put my clasp on the end here. And then I can hold it up and see what it's going to look like. So I am going to take the six millimeter on this end and the loop on my other strand and I'm going to put it through this six millimeter jump ring and then I'm going to drop my clasp on and close it and see what I come up with here. Okay. Actually I think it might work. I may have to shorten the inside strand. It's usually when you have a strand on the inside you have to shorten it a little. So let me see how it's going to work. Actually, it might be okay. Um, let me see. No, I think I am going to 
Let's go ahead and take off this jump ring on the inside strand and I'm going to attach it to the jump ring on the, the um, clasping just to shorten the inside because I made it exactly the same length as the other one and when you do that when you have two strands that are exactly exactly the same it kind of bunches but I thought it might work but I know better actually so this last jump ring that ha is on the clasping I took off the extra one I put on and I'm going to on the inside strand and I am now going to just put this inside strand on this last red component so you need just one jump ring on the end here making sure that your inside strand is shorter than your outside strand and then they're going to lay better together so let me show you what I have now that I have shortened that inside strand a little bit it'll lay on the inside of the outside strand better when we put it on our necks they're still going to twist and do things because they're a double strand, but um, they should lay pretty nice. And now we're just going to build the other side exactly the same way. So we will start by building the outside strand, or the inside strand, I guess it was. So we'll start by building the inside strand, and then we will attach to the jump ring here. We'll attach to the jump ring our second strand. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make my components. I will start the second side for you so you can see, and then we will um, finish making the strands, and then I'll test it and see how it works on the neck. If it doesn't work, I'll come up with something else. But I think this is, I think it's gonna be pretty. Okay, so I'm going to try to clarify this because that was probably a little confusing with these two as I was designing. So this is what you're going to need when you make either side of your necklace. You're going to need 30 clear looped beads and you're going to need 30 red clear red looped beads. And of course some of your six millimeter round jump rings. Now, I already have for one side, I have 15 red and 15 clear. I already have one of my red on my heart here that we attached with a jump ring in the very beginning. Now, I've put a clear one on another jump ring and I am going to attach that jump ring to the jump ring that I attached the red unit on. So right here on the outside of it, I'm going to put this jump ring with this clear bead. And that will be the beginning of my second strand. So I'm just gonna put this on here and close it. So this is what the beginning is going to look like. Now the red one is going to be the inside strand. The clear one is going to be the outside strand. And you're just going to go ahead and continue building both strands until you run out of your beads that you've made here. So 15 clear and 15 of the red, including these two on here. So this is my 15th clear bead and this is my 15th um, red bead. Now I'm just going to start alternating just like I did on the other side. I will do, I will connect a jump ring and then on the red I will connect a clear and then on the clear I will connect a red and I will continue doing that till I get to the end and then I will show you how we will do the end again just to make sure that you know how to um, make both sides perfectly because I think this was a little confusing in the beginning and we'll know that we need to keep the inside strand a little shorter than the outside strand so 
Now continue building this side of your necklace and once we have put, put all 30 beads on, we'll be back. Okay, so now I have made my second side. And just to make everything very clear, on the outside strand you're going to have 8 of your clear units and you're going to have 7 of your red units. On the inside strand you're going to have 8 red and seven clear. And when you end it, or when you're done, this is what it should look like. Your inside strand should be a little bit shorter than your outside strand. Just a jump ring length shorter. Then you're going to grab your jump ring and open it and put both of these links directly on. So I'm going to put the inside strand on first and then the outside just to make sure that they're in the right order just like this and then I'm going to put on my clasp and I'm going to close it. And now if I get it all arranged correctly here you can see what the back looks like here. And so, with the inside strand being shorter than the outside strand, it's going to hang correctly on your neck. So, let me get this arranged in the camera here so you can see what it looks like. It turned out really pretty. I really like the way it turned out. So, let me see if I can get the whole thing in the camera here. And that's the way it looks. So, I think that's... It's really pretty. And it hangs nicely, works well. As long as you do not twist it when you clasp it, it should hang nice and look really good. So that's what that looks like. And I think I'm going to go ahead and make some more links, come back and show you how many links I have, and design a bracelet. Okay, so I have designed a bracelet and I'm going to show you how to make that in a moment. But I wanted to do a quick note on the necklace. Because I was designing this as I was making the video, I sometimes need to go back and make adjustments. And I'm sorry about that, but that's how you design. You just adjust until you get something that works better if you don't like what you have. And so the only change I made was we have a six millimeter jump ring attached to the pendant. To that six millimeter jump ring, we have our inside strand, our six millimeter round red bead attached directly to that six millimeter jump ring jump ring. And then for the outside strand we attached a six millimeter jump ring to this six millimeter jump ring. Well I have taken that six millimeter jump ring off that was attaching the outside strand and put two four millimeter jump rings on both sides. Not only does it lay better by moving the bulk away from the first two red beads, it just lessens the bulk in the, the entire appearance of the way that the pendant lays on the necklace. So instead of putting a six millimeter, you'll put two four millimeters. And that's the only adjustment. If you've already started making it, just take that six millimeter off and put two four millimeters. You'll be much happier with the way it looks and um, also the way it lays. <clears throat> now, since that has been mentioned, this is the bracelet I have designed. And let me lay it out so you can see how cute it is. This bracelet is what we are going to make. We are going to do the exact same components we have been making and this looks really cute and I'll show it to you on in just a minute. Um, but let's go ahead and learn how to make it first. So we're making the same units that we made for the necklace. And I have made 10 red and I have made 10 of the clear. What we're adding to this that's a little bit different is we're adding a larger jump ring for the centerpiece and we are going to add six charms. We're going to be using, these are I believe five millimeter round on the outside diameter jump rings. 
So I'm going to measure this jump ring here just so I can tell you exactly how many millimeters it is. And it is eight. So this is an eight millimeter jump ring on the outside diameter. You can use a bigger one or a smaller one, but um, you're going to have to adjust your length accordingly if you change the size of your jump ring. <clears throat> so we're going to use one of these and then um, we're going to need a clasp, of course, and let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with our 10 millimeter or our 8 millimeter jump ring here. And I'm going to just, I'm going to grab my other pliers. Those little ones kind of mar everything. So I'm just going to open this. And not those. These. Okay. I'm going to open this. And then... I am going to add onto this large jump ring a couple of my units. So I am going to first put a red unit on just directly from the loop that's on the red unit. Make sure your loop is closed tightly on either side and then just drop, I'm going to drop a red one on. And then on the upper half so that it hangs correctly, I am going to put a 5 millimeter jump ring on the unit, and I'm referring back to my last one if it seems like I'm hesitating, just to make sure. I'm going to put a 5 millimeter jump ring onto this unit and close it, and I'm going to drop it down over the top of the red one, just like that, and keep them in order. And then I'm going to do the other thing that I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, reversing it. So I'm going to connect the clear unit directly to the jump ring first. Okay, go on there. And then I'm going to put a jump ring onto a red one. and then close it and drop it on top of the clear one and then I'm just going to pick up the big jump ring and close it. Now we have to separate them back out and lay them like this. Now you're just going to start connecting your units with a five millimeter jump ring alternating the colors. I need to close this unit here. Sorry about that, but I got to do that real quick. Okay. Make sure your loops are closed on your beads, on your looped units here. Okay. So now I have it laid out just like this. I will do a five millimeter jump ring and a clear bead and then a five millimeter jump ring and a red bead and on the bottom strand I will do a five millimeter jump ring and then a red bead so I'm alternating the colors and I'll do both sides. Putting on each strand you will have five beads. So if you're starting with the red you're going to have three red and two clear with your jump rings in between. And if you're starting with a clear, you're going to have three clear and two red. So you're just going to alternate them on either side of your large jump ring. So we're going to continue putting on units on both sides so that we have five units on each strand with jump rings in between, five of our beaded units. So go ahead and start connecting them and I will come back and show you what it looks like after I have connected mine. Okay, so I have connected my five looped beads on either side of the jump ring, both strands. So <clears throat> now you can see, if you look at the very ends, two strands should be shorter than two other strands. So um, what I'm saying is these this is like one bead longer than these two strands down here. So I am going to add a jump ring to the shorter strand. 
on either side of the big jump ring, just like this. So I will add this jump ring and then <clears throat> we will place one jump ring on both strands and put it onto the clasp. So first let's pick up a jump ring and we'll put it on the short ends on either side. So I'm just going to open this jump ring. I'm going to pop it on here and close it. And then the same thing on the other side. I will open it. <clears throat> Put it on here and close it. Now I will grab another five millimeter jump ring, open it up, and I will put, making sure I don't mix my strands up, so I will scoop up this side here, and then I will place the loop that's on the beaded unit directly onto this jump ring, and then I can pick up my clasp and put it on there and close it. And then the same thing on this side. Now, of course, you can always adjust the amount of units you make to get the length that you want for your bracelet. So you can make more or less units. It will still basically end up the same. You will have to add a jump ring on the end and um, you will have to put your clasping on exactly the same way. So it doesn't matter how many units you make, as long as they are even on both sides, as far as the number of units. So you want five on this and five on this one, is what I'm saying. So I'm going to go ahead and drop both of them on in order. Don't cross them, because then it will be twisted. And then I'm going to put on my clasp, just like that. <clears throat> And now I have my base. And for some reason, one side is being a little weird. Let me see why. Is that being weird? I don't know. Okay. Then we're going to take three of our charms on either side of this large jump ring. We're going to attach jump rings and the clasp or the charms, excuse me. So you can use a little bit smaller jump ring if you would like, or a little bit, or the same size we've been using. And I think on my previous one, I used the same size. So if you'd like to, you can go down a size jump ring. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to, I'm going to just grab a jump ring and I'm going to put it on the loop of the clasp and then I'm going to put it on the jump ring in the middle here and then close it. Lay it back out and then I will put one on this side and one on this side and then I'll put three on this side of the jump ring and we will be back. Okay, as you can see, I have added my charms to my middle jump ring here, and they're really cute. They just kind of dangle around rather chaotically when you wear it, and I'll show you that in a moment. However, I have decided because these clasps have such a huge loop on them, I'm really a little disappointed in these clasps because of this gigantic loop. It makes the functioning of the clasp kind of odd and not really easy to use. So what I have done is this is the jump ring right here that I attached it to. I, I dropped on my two units and then I dropped on this jump ring. Well, I have taken it off the clasp and closed it back up and now I'm going to add a four millimeter jump ring to that jump ring and then add my clasping to the four millimeter jump ring just to narrow it down a little bit and help with the fact that the clasp just functions really odd. So if I give it a little bit more length here, it's going to go through the heart side a little bit better. So I'm just going to grab this jump ring, put a four millimeter jump ring on it, and then I'm going to put the clasp on this four millimeter jump ring. See if I can compensate for that odd, huge loop. 
That is something I will look at in the future when I order class because that is just, it doesn't help it function well. And I'm a little disappointed in them. So this is what we've got here, the finished product. And I made another one. So I've got two and you can see that they are really cute. This one, I have not put the extra jump ring down here yet and I'm going to. So I'm going to try this one on and see if it helps me actually put on my bracelet. It did give it a little bit more length, but um, that's okay. It's not a lot. And I'm going to see. It's you have to position these just right to get them on. But it did help quite a bit. And it also helps it lay nicer because I've used it a couple of other times making these tutorials. And it's, unless you position it just right, because of this huge loop, it lays weird. So now that has really helped by putting the extra little jump ring on there. And I want you to see how cute this is. This is just really cute. So when you move your hand around, these little hearts will just flop around. It's just really cute. And this is what the clasping looks like. This is what the bracelet looks like. And of course you could put the hearts on just one side if you want to, um, the side that goes down towards your hand. But I think that it's really cute just having them kind of just floppy around on it. And I really like it. So that is the bracelet. And we have made, it looks really nice with the necklace. So I am going to go ahead and design a pair of earrings and then we'll call this video done because I'm sure it's getting very long. Okay, bye-bye. I mean, I'll be back. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I have made a really simple earring and it's hard to show you when it dangles because of the way the beads lie next to each other. It kind of dangles in a little circular shape and it fans out and it's kind of cute. So I have little heart dangles on the end of each link and then I've just attached it to an ear wire. Now you're going to have to double the amount I show you here because I've already made one. I'm showing you for one earring. I'm using four of the little heart charms for each earring and four links, two red and two clear. And then I'm going to use a six millimeter jump ring and some four millimeter jump rings. And we're just going to grab a jump ring and on each one of these links, we're going to put on a little heart. So just gonna grab a jump ring and put on a heart. Just like this, close your jump ring. and this is what you have. So make four of those and we'll connect them all together. Okay, so here are my four links with the hearts on them. And then I'm just going to grab my six millimeter jump ring and I am going to open it. And I'm going to drop each link on for the top loop here, alternating the colors. Well, get back on there, you. Okay, so I have all four of them on there. I'm going to close the jump ring. And then I'm going to grab a four millimeter jump ring. And I'm going to open it. And put it on the six millimeter jump ring I put my links on and then put it on my ear wire. And I have an earring. And like I said, I wish I could show you better how it dangles. It's very difficult to show on the angle of my camera, but they're really cute the way they just kind of fan out and hang kind of circular. It's really cute. So there are those and here is the bracelet. Let me lay it out. Come here you. I 
you get the gist. It's not perfect because, you know, I don't have time to sit and arrange it perfectly at the moment, but I will take a really nice picture so you can see how pretty they are. And you will be able to see the full set very nicely laid out. But right now, we're just going to make do. And here is the entire set. I think it turned out really cute. And like I said, I'll lay it out pretty, take a nice picture of it, and you'll be able to see the entire set laid out nicely. And then you can decide if you want to make one. And you know, these strands were so long, all the beads that I've used, and I actually made two bracelets, I still have this many beads left. So we can make something else, blend the red with the pink, which was my original idea, but I just thought that I wanted to make something that was just clear and red, and I think it turned out really pretty. So that is the set. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.